In 1999, a Canadian cryptographer was analyzing a routine Microsoft Windows update when he found something strange buried in the code. It was a digital key, a cryptographic key, and what was his name? NSA key. Now you may not know what a key like this does, but it's basically like a master signature that tells Windows which software can be trusted and which can't. So why was there a second key apparently belonging to the National Security Agency? And why has Microsoft never said a word about it? Unless they weren't supposed to. It's the summer of 1999. Andrew Fernandez is a respected cryptographer working at a security firm called Kryptonym. On a quiet afternoon, he's digging through the Windows NT Service Pack 5 update. It's just another day in the life of a security researcher. He's trying to better understand how Microsoft digitally signs and verifies software in the operating system itself. Now let me pause for just a second and I'll kind of explain something about that. In Windows and in most secure systems, a cryptographic key acts like a digital signature. It's used to verify that a piece of software, like a driver or an update, really came from Microsoft and hasn't been tampered with. Think of it like an airport security type scenario. If the file has the right badge, Windows lets it through. If it doesn't, it's blocked. Now normally, there's only one trusted key built into the operating system, and that would be Microsoft's owned key. But Andrew sees two. One is the standard Microsoft key, the second is labeled NSA key, and it's real, it's active, and it could, at least theoretically, be used to install software silently, bypassing all the usual checks and warnings. In other words, it could be a back door, and it looks like the NSA has the key. Andrew releases his findings to the public. He even publishes a small program that proves the key works demonstrating that software signed with it is trusted by Windows just like Microsoft's own updates. The reaction? Well, chaos. People online begin to panic. Was Microsoft secretly working with the NSA? Did the US government have a silent back channel into every Windows machine on Earth, including banks, government, and businesses? The story hits tech blogs and mainstream media. The name? NSA key is going to spread like wildfire. Facing growing hysteria, Microsoft releases a statement. They claim the NSA key was just a backup key used internally for managing compatibility with cryptographic modules. They deny any NSA involvement. Here's their official line. There is no backdoor in Windows. The so-called NSA key is a Microsoft backup key poorly named by a developer. But skeptics are quick to point out, why would a backup key be labeled after a government agency? And if it's not a backdoor, why wasn't it documented anywhere? Why was it hidden? So experts immediately begin digging around. Some suggest that the United States government required software companies to allow classified review of their encryption, especially during the height of the 1990s crypto wars when the United States was trying to limit the export of strong encryption. Others propose a more chilling idea, that Microsoft built in a second signing mechanism so the NSA could insert code if needed, especially in foreign governments or adversarial environments. You gotta remember, this was the same decade where the United States tried to introduce the Clipper chip, a surveillance-enabled device that would allow law enforcement to listen in on encrypted communications, with a court order, of course. That effort, of course, failed. So, did they try a more subtle route with software? with Windows? Now as the panic spreads, Microsoft quietly removes the reference to the NSA key in all future versions of Windows. They don't disable the functionality, just the name. In the end, no one can prove whether the NSA key was even used. And to be fair, many experts believe it wasn't a malicious backdoor at all, just a poorly named internal certificate. But the damage was done 
the idea that your operating system might include a secret government key became a permanent part of cybersecurity folklore. And it raised a question we still ask today. Can you ever truly trust closed source software, especially when it's everywhere? Here's the twist. Even now, decades later, we don't know who named it NSA key. We don't know if it was ever even used, and we'll probably never find out. Because when you give one entity the power to silently unlock your system and then deny that the key ever even existed, you're not just asking for trust, you're essentially demanding it.